Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of the Laura London Fitness Show. Today I'm very excited. I'm here in Deerfield Beach, Florida at the Balanced Life Retreat Spa and I am interviewing Dr. Frank Sabatino. Dr. Sabatino is a chiropractic physician. He has a PhD in cellular biology and neuroendocrinology from that's Emory good. University. That. I mean, yeah, that's good. He's a member of the <laughs> International Association of Hygienic Physicians, and he is a well-known expert in water-only fasting and integrative health care. So welcome, Dr. Sabatino. Well, thank you for having me today. I'm looking forward to this interview with you. So. I'm so excited because I have been following you for probably 20 years now. So for me, this is a real honor. So thank you. Thank you. I would love to start with how you got into the healthcare industry to begin with. Can I take it back? Well, you're going way back now. Yeah, actually early on, I wanted to be a doctor from very early ages of my life. But growing up in New York City the way that I did, I had some of my own personal health issues. You know, growing up back then, we were eating meat, dairy, we were a pretty standard diet. And in those days, we lived by the four basic food groups, right. if you recall those charts that oh, yes. hung in every grammar school everywhere. And I had a kind of a history of colitis as a child. Mm -hmm. And living in New York, uh, of course, I dealt with some of the best medical experts, but no one ever saw a connection between diet and what I was suffering with. And we, if you think it was dark ages then, even to this day, I'm still shocked how many gastroenterologists don't feel there's any relationship between what we eat yeah. and what happens in bowel function. Make the story short, I was sicker and sicker, and then in my teenage years as I was going into college, I met a man who was the father of a good friend of mine. He was an insurance salesman in the Bronx, Uncle Luigi, <laughs> and Louis had collected an anti-medical library for, or a, a, a medical library over about 20, 30 years. We had all these philosophers, these thinkers in natural hygiene and fasting and natural hygiene movement. So I started reading my way through his library and I started to apply those principles of eating. And for the first time, the colitis became a thing of the past. Wow. And I thought it was really intriguing that after 15 years of medical mismanagement, it took an insurance salesman from the Bronx mm -hmm. to solve my problems. So that led me into wanting to learn more and more. Mm -hmm. I decided that chiropractic, uh, the chiropractic profession would be better for me. It didn't involve drugs and surgery, and I wanted mm -hmm. to be drugless and all of that. And then I met a number of the hygienic physician pioneers that were running fasting clinics mm -hmm. all over the world. And I got familiar with them, and I started to learn from them. And then I decided that that would be my path. I became a chiropractor. I then went and did an apprenticeship with Dr. David Scott in Cleveland, mm -hmm. Ohio, who ran a long-term fasting institution. And then he had his own blood lab. I ran that for a year. I learned about that. And then I ran, my first job was at the Shangri-La Natural Hygiene mm -hmm. Institute on the, in Bonita Springs in Florida. I was like 27, 28 years old. And that's when I first did water supervised, supervised water fasting. I got a chance to really see this lifestyle within the context of the clinical practice. Mm -hmm. And so my education went through chiropractic, went through that, and then I decided I wanted to do more research. And I went back to the Emory University School of Medicine. I did brain and endocrine research for the next seven or so years. And then was on the faculty of medicine at the University of Texas. And I was on the research team that did the landmark studies on calorie restriction and aging. Mm -hmm. And then it was there that I got a job to work at the Regency Health Spa in mm -hmm. South Florida. And I was there 25 years. Fast forward a few years and here I am running the Balance of Your Life Retreat in Deerfield Beach, Florida, applying all of those principles of plant-based living, we do supervised water fasting, so that's kind of a short story. Okay, and between that, I raised five kids and did all of that and all of those things too, but that's kind of the professional dance, right. so to speak. Right, right. Well, okay, so I have like so many questions. Okay. Um, I know you, I have a lot of moms who are followers, Okay. and you know, they want to raise the children healthy. They're up against all these obstacles. You said you had five children and you raised them plant-based. Maybe you have some tips or how you did that in today's world. Well, you know, um, my who is my ex-wife now, we're still friendly, she had three children when we got married. So I married somebody with three small children. Mm -hmm. And then we made two kids together, two boys, mm -hmm. that I still live with. And she, 
herself grew up in a family of Seventh Day Adventists, so she the only women she ever knew were like seventy and eighty year vegetarians. Mm -hmm. You know, all these mm -hmm. people were into that lifestyle. So together, we were very close on wanting to do that with our children. So we kind of brought them up and exposed them that way. And we always gave them substitutions. Nobody likes to feel deprived. Right. I will tell that to parents. So right. if, you, if they want a pizza, my kids got a pizza, but mm -hmm. they got it with soy cheese and they got it with, you know, this kind. Of, so all of those analogs and substitutions right. were used so that there was never a sense of deprivation. Mm -hmm. And my experience with children, too, is this. If they grow it or make it, they'll eat it. Yes. So I got them in the kitchen early. They were making dressings. They would. So I would get them involved in exciting food prep, let them taste things, let them have fun with it, and give them substitutions so they don't mm -hmm. feel deprived, whether that's a coconut yogurt or right. it's a soy cheese. They're not ideal, but they're a good gateway and a good right. transition way to get people to stay on track. I think now more than any other time, really, there's so many options for mm -hmm. plant-based for families yeah. that there were never before. I agree. It's so much more socially acceptable. I mean, restaurants, every, everybody. You can make these adjustments a lot easier yes. now. But and like you said, there's so many products, so many restaurants, so many groups now that support this. So I would get kids involved in all of that and mm -hmm. then more likely to stay on track if you do that. Yes, great. All right, I would like to talk about autoimmune a little okay. bit because I was diagnosed five, oh man, three years ago with Hashimoto's. Okay. And all I was told is my body's attacking itself, you know, we want to put you on medication, sorry. And I was like, mm, no, I'm going to figure it out myself, mm -hmm. right? And then uh, maybe a year later, vitiligo. I started having, I lost the pigment in my okay. shins, on my chest, it started on my face. Okay. And plant-based diet really, really helped. Okay. So I just want to kind of, I know a lot of my followers are suffering with Thyroid issues and well, you know, autoimmune has become an unbelievable buzzword and an unbelievable thing in our culture. And when you say autoimmune, you know, we have an immune system that is really designed to protect us. That's what it's for. It's designed to recognize everything that is us mm -hmm. and everything that's not us, and then to protect us against what's not us. I mean, that's basically how it works. And what's interesting, whether it's allergy or autoimmune, you now have kind of an exaggerated response of your immune system where now it's reacting forcefully, in the case of allergy, to things that may not pose a major threat, like strawberry is not a major threat to the system, but the immune system is acting like it is, or it starts acting against itself for a variety of reasons in this autoimmune space. Um, one of the things we know about autoimmunity is that it seems to also be triggered by gut health, mm -hmm. by the environment of what's happening in the intestinal tract. And the reason is, in the gut, you've got cells that are fastened together quite closely. They're called tight junctions. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the large bowel, for example, it's kind of like a tight mesh where only small things can get through it because the large bowel is designed to only accept water and small electrolytes. Mm -hmm. All of the other digestive stuff has happened above it. But if you have stress, excessive cortisol, or if you're eating poor diets, high, uh, uh, high refined foods, lacking fiber, if you're uh, subjected to a lot of antibiotic, or if you're eating foods like, let's say, gluten that you may have some sensitivity to, you can compromise that gut flora that's creating the very smooth, intact lining of your intestinal tract. And so what will happen is it starts to create cracks and breaks. Mm -hmm. It starts to disrupt the tight junction of those cells mm -hmm. and also the lining of the bowel itself so that now larger molecules can seep through. Mm -hmm. Now, there's something that's called biological mimicry that plays a lot, that plays a big role in autoimmune disease. If you're eating a lot of animal products and you're eating the protein that's in the cartilage and the ligaments and the meat and the tendons of those animals, and now you have an opening of that gut, which we call a leaky gut, let's say, for the sake of argument, you are now seeping through that gut larger protein molecules or fragments of protein or byproducts of that, and even some of the endotoxins of disturbed bacteria or pathological bacteria that are now overgrowing in your gut. So now the immune system will now start to mount a response and an attack against those far what it perceives 
as foreign proteins. Mm -hmm. So it creates an immune response. The mm -hmm. problem is when it encounters the proteins in the ligaments and tendons of our own joints, which mm -hmm. are similar to the ones in the animals you're eating, mm -hmm. and it's already been attacking those proteins, it's mm -hmm. going to start doing the same mm -hmm. to the same kind of proteins in our own joints. So you can have rheumatoid arthritis. Right. You've got something in wheat, one of the part of gluten is something called gliadin. It's also found in the thyroid gland. Mm -hmm. So if the body starts mounting an attack against gluten and gliadin, what do you think it's going to do when it finds the same chemical in your thyroid? It's going to right. attack it. And now you've got the beginning of Hashimoto's. Right. So autoimmune disease is really a, a kind of an inflammatory hyperimmune response reacting to chemicals that have been now kind of seeped through the protective linings of the body, mm -hmm. creating a reaction of the immune system to protect you, mm -hmm. but now attacking you when it finds the similar proteins in your own body. Mm -hmm. And so autoimmune is kind of a tricky dangerous kind of process because you're now fighting yourself. And so you've got to heal the gut lining. You've got to give the body a chance to detoxify from those proteins. You've got to give the immune system a chance to reset and reboot. And that's where something like therapeutic water-only fasting has been very valuable right. because it creates a resetting, a rebooting of that immune response. And we see very good results in reversing autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm in a water fasting state, mm -hmm. then followed by a completely low-fat, plant-based, whole food plant-based approach. And in our case, we even take away the salt, oil, and sugar. Mm -hmm. We make it non-SOS. Right. So you're not getting any provocative stimulation of that immune response, and it will allow the body to heal that autoimmune problem. Yeah, because really, I like to think that your body is not attacking itself. It's trying to heal itself. It's attacking yeah. ourselves only because it's attacking proteins that it has found in other substances that have been a threat mm -hmm. and a challenge mm -hmm. to the system. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go out of its way to eat its way through your own joints right. unless it's programmed to attack the proteins that it finds there. It's just a horrible feel or thought to have in your head when they say your body's attacking itself. It's not yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah, the language is, uh, yeah, I mean, in a way that's language. what's happening, but I agree with you. The language goes a long way to dictating yeah. how we react and respond even in our brain. So, um, but the, the hopeful point is, is that it's a fixable problem. Yes, for and sure. And that's the really important piece. For sure. So, water fasting. Can you give it's, us the 101 on water fasting? Yeah, water people? fasting is just the complete abstention from everything but water for a certain period of time. It gives the body a chance to shift away from normal metabolism, normal procuring of food, normal digesting of food, making energy available for repairing and detoxifying things that it needs to do, while creating a new form of energy from our own fat reserves mm -hmm. that we now live on for an extended period of time. Mm -hmm. So by this self-digestion and putting the body in more of a repair mode rather than the normal growth mode when we're eating protein and sugars and fats, the body will shift gears will go into maintenance and repair. It'll heal things that it now has the energy to heal more effectively. It doesn't need energy for digestion of food and the getting of food. So it promotes healing, detoxification, and repair. Mm -hmm. So, But it has to be done under complete resting conditions. Right. So mm -hmm. under resting conditions, you mobilize that energy for repair and elimination. I love it. And, and that is what you do here. That's one of the things we do yeah. here. We, we have medically supervised water-only fasting, and we're one of only a few places in the world that does right. that, and absolutely probably one of the only few places on the ocean in the world that does it. It's gorgeous. Yeah, here. so like, it's beautiful. It's we're very absolutely fortunate. beautiful. Just I like have it. to tell you, this has been, I've, I've fasted probably between five and 10,000 people all over the place. Wow. This has been the easiest place that I've ever found mm -hmm. to fast people, because when you get these oceanfront rooms, they open up, those breezes blowing off the ocean, we have sunrise, and if you're going to spend a lot more time in a room, which sometimes you do when you're fasting sure. because you're resting, it's lovely to have that ocean right. environment to support what you're doing. Great, I agree. Now, you do more than just water-only fasting here, though. People can come for a day, three Yeah, we days, have a complete week. food program that's, again, whole food, plant-based, mostly organic. We have a juicing program mm -hmm. if people just want to juice and detox that way. We do water-only fasting. So we have a complete program, and the food program is magnificent. And it ties into our overall program, which involves a full day of fitness. Mm -hmm. It involves stress management approaches. I teach Tai Chi myself here. We have yoga every day. We have a wonderful group of fitness instructors mm -hmm. that do everything from 
morning walks to low impact water aerobics, studio classes, Pilates, mm -hmm. all of those things are done all through the course of the day. So it's a full lifestyle residential program. It's amazing. I love it. It truly, it is a little hidden gem here in yeah. Deerfield Beach. So it's really, I want to get the word out to everyone that this is here. Um, I know there's a conference coming up in January, the International Hygiene Association. Well, it's the National Health Association is going to sponsor it. We're okay. holding it here. It's our second annual one of this kind. Okay. You know, we had this incredible location. Mm -hmm. and We said, you know what? We have our day-to-day -day program, which I keep very intimate because mm -hmm. we have like 10 to 20 people that we do at max. So I can interact with each person individually. Right. But we said, you know, we have this incredible location, which would be great for other influencers and entrepreneurs wanting mm -hmm. to bring groups and speakers that support plant-based living mm -hmm. and so on. So we said, let's see if we can get that going. So mm -hmm. we started with our first conference in January, last, last January, and it was very successful. So by invitation, I have some of the best speakers in the world. This year we have Dr. Michael Clapper, which yeah. many people know, Brenda Davis, who's a world-famous nutritionist, Dr. Stefan Esser, who's a physician up in Jacksonville, who was Harvard and Mayo Clinic trained, and his granddaddy was Bill Esser, who was one of the great fast, uh, uh, you know, water supervising fasters of all time. Uh, we have Janie Goddard from England, who runs the Complementary Medical Association. We have Elise Jones, a yogini to do her special yoga classes. So it's a remarkable wow. program. It'll be all plant-based, SOS plant-based. And it's a nice little uh, community. It's a little sense of community, sharing information, oceanside, time for a healthy vacation, yeah. plus all of this remarkable information that can promote a better quality of life. And that's what we're about. That's fabulous. Well, thank you so much. That was uh, like so much wonderful information for everybody. I really appreciate you taking the time today because I know, you know, you're kind of on a, a well, little holiday. Well, thank you for taking the time to include me in what you're doing. I think it's great. And, and I love that we have a chance to okay. inform people and get this info yeah. out to as many people so. Me too. So thank you very much. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. And we'll see you guys on the next video.